he has another one of these surprising attack damage threats for the mid lane. Uh, as well as Cody's son, I would expect him to try and pick up some sort of lane bully down there. He talked about trying to really put the pressure on their opponents early on. Well, we're not going to see too many surprises in terms of the enchanters because they have all been picked up now. The Yumi, the Lux, that Karma has been picked up. The only one that hasn't been grabbed by either side is the Sona because Team Liquid and Clutch <laughs> both opted into more traditional bottom style lanes. Uh -huh. But man, that is a lot of shielding power going to be up here in this game. Sivir versus Lucian in the bottom side. Yeah, Sivir, Lucian. Uh, gonna be going head to head. Lucian definitely gets the advantage there, uh, especially early on. This is what Cody Sun used last weekend as well in their victory. It was three high pressure early pushing lanes for Clutch. So we'll see if Team Liquid try and ban out a couple of those possible threats for Demonte still here in the second round. Because Clutch really feel like they've got a mystery card lying in wait. They haven't jumped in and got him anything early. They're saving the counter pick here. Last pick to red side. Plus, whenever you're up against a team like TL and you're one of those teams that's on the cusp of playoffs, picking up a win that most of your competitors for that spot will probably have racked up as a loss in their own <laughs> column against a team that sits at the top of the standings gives you a nice edge for being able to eke your way in there at the very end of the split. We'll see if they can make that happen. They have banned out Aatrox and TF. The Olaf banned out by Team Liquid. They don't want Lyra having all that early jungle power with that champion. One more band to go. What's it going to be? Are they going to continue focusing that jungle pool, or Rexai. will they opt for something a little bit different? Nope, Elise. it's jungling. Elise. Another early one. Uh, Rek'Sai definitely still open then. That's a possible early jungler for Lyra if they want to continue with this style. Uh, heavy ganking. As you're talking about, though, you know, the Team Liquid side is a very defensive opening here. They're very defensive showing, and a lot of those are fairly difficult to gank. Sivir with the spell shield, and then also the Yumi speed ups is hard to keep track of here. Silas is locked in. Yep. That's going to be another jungle Silas here. Super excited to see that for Lyra. Has a lot of scaling potential, really big power spikes on completion of your runic echoes as well as your proto belt. And also the massive power spike when you hit level 16. Remember, this is still patch 9.13. <laughs> so it's not with a massive cooldown nerf on the level 3 ultimate, meaning that champion will be ulting like crazy in these late game fights. Oh, you know you want me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right. Team Liquid says, all right, you got Silas. We got something even better. Let me tell you, uh, ask you, Captain Flowers, as a Skarner connoisseur. Have you ever been in a game where you Skarner ulted a Silas while he tried to Skarner ult you with oh, your yeah. own ult? It just turns into a little bit of tug of war. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's a magical moment, but we are going to see the Corky picked up uh, here as well for the side of Team Liquid. So that means Corky probably going to be there the in the Zed lane. Flowers. And we've got the Zed <laughs> up against the Corky as well to try to pop them. That's what we're looking for. I knew that they had a mystery card. They were holding on to it. They first rounded Rumble and uh, Lux, knowing that they've got another AD threat left for Demonte. I hope that they keep it in his hands. Last time around, they switched it to Cody Sun, yeah. and they had some lane swapping. Uh, but I think Demonte needs his time to shine here on another attack damage assassin. And I feel almost bamboozled by the hover of Zed earlier because we see it just hovered as a meme so uh -huh. often, especially uh -huh. when they had such a bad game with it with Cody. You're thinking, ah, oh, they're just going to hover it. They'll get the audience excited, maybe bait a couple of fans here. But nope, <laughs> the Zed is locked in. No time for resident sleepers in the chat. I want to see this pop off. We've been seeing so much Corky, so much Azir in the mid lane. People have been wondering, what is the counter to this? How do you deal with the scaling? Or do you just play scaling, be scaling all day long? Well, Clutch says, nope, we're going to try to cut him down early, get that assassin rolling. And it does hinge a lot on those early plays. You have to get going, because if you do not, it's so hard to assassinate people. Through a Karma Shield, through a Yumi healing your target, it can get very frustrating as these assassins. Plus, he has to worry about jumping in and getting ulted by Skarner. Uh, that puts a very big damper on most assassin yes, gameplay. Sir. Skarner is actually incredibly effective against assassins. I actually like playing him the most in assassin metas, because the problem of running after guys is pretty easily solved when the guys run at you. All you have to do is sit on top of the carry and keep them protected. But we're on to the rift here for game number four of the day. And as the players make their way out onto the rift, Cody Sun earlier today shared Clutch's strategy to collect wins towards the end of the split. I think for us, because we're kind of this newer team and you know this this mix of like different um, players from different eras, um, we're gonna try to you know make the game you know a fiesta and then just thrive in the in the fiesta and hopefully you know um, we can make some unpredictable play to kind of um, catch them off guard.
Clutch wants a Fiesta, and I've got my party hat on <laughs> after they've locked in the Zed. This is one of my favorite champions to watch in pro play because there's so many cool things you can do with it, so many cool outplays, and I hope DeMonte has been practicing up on it. I'm very glad that we got this game. We are both Fiesta lovers, and yes, sir. let's get into it with Clutch. They wanted it, and we're going to get another one here. Yeah, Lux so cool. and Lucian on a ward, though. See if Double Lift and uh, Corte J go try and get a little Spell Thief's money off of them, as well as some good damage. Yeah, some nice poke. The thing about the Lux Shield, very strong once both halves of it apply, but considering you have a delay, if they can burst you down pretty quickly there with the Boomerang Blades into the Prowling Projectiles, makes it easy to win out on that snappy trade. Cody, Sun, and Vulcan will be forced back here, and I want to see how Core JJ looks on the Yumi. We've just not got to see too much of the champion overall because it's so permanently banned. Oh. I'm excited to see how this works. Huge harassment out of the Team Liquid bottom lane already, and we kind of talked about it on uh, Champion Select, how Team Liquid have been trying to draft these very powerful uh, early high-pressure bottom lanes for Core JJ and Double Lift now. Mm -hmm. Given that early ward, giving them the advantage of 100 HP coming into lane, it is going to be non-stop barrages down here from skill shots. Double Lift and Core JJ landing most of them here in the early game. And we know how oppressive the Yumi can be too. Once you're on the back foot against this champion, the Prowling Projectile will just keep moving forward as long as the ally Yumi is attached to can also keep moving forward with it. Gives you an incredible amount of chase potential as mid lane Jensen will be able to get the better of DeMonte here early on until the Zed has a couple of levels to try to get some better trades against the ranged opponent. And this is one of the reasons I was kind of expecting the Rek'Sai for the jungle for Clutch Gaming, trying to go super all in on early game ganking. Uh, Silas definitely can go for level ganks, uh, level three ganks as well and could make a pass mid, but that's what DeMonte kind of has to wait for. The Zed looks for an all in with your Ignite to try and get an early kill on the Corky when the jungler comes. Bottom side is just continuing to be this double lift and core JJ skill shot palooza as it's prowling projectile <laughs> into boomerang blade over and over and over again. Vulcan and Cody Sun will have to try to dodge these, but man, it is hard. It is a one sided party so far. And it is literally just core JJ and double lift throwing everything they have at Cody Sun under this turret. It's also denied a decent amount of C uh, CS to that turret. So they're getting rewards beyond the health bars that they're chunking down. Speaking of getting chunked, DeMonte continuing to eat that damage from the Phosphorus Bomb and the auto attacks coming out of Jensen's Corky. Again, Corky sort of just making his way into the meta along with the Azir, these two big scaling mid laners kind of just becoming the mark of what you have to deal with in the current iteration of the meta. As the junglers will both be on the Scuttle Crabs now, it's Smithy on the top side, bottom side occupied by Lyra. See if that vision plays much of a difference here, or if Lyra decides to make something happen in the mid lane. And Lyra did about 30 seconds ago proc that Scryer's Bloom. Uh, you saw it on your mini-map, Scryer's Bloom. Uh, it actually just shot up from the bottom side. Now he's going for the gank, actually, on bottom side. Blinding find his way on a double lift. Good block comes out from Core JJ, though. Leaves double lift from the attach to block the stun. Speaking of stuns, it's top side. It's Smithy locking down Hooney, forcing right. out the flash. Bunch of summoner spells blown. Both teams have to keep track of these. Top side been focused by uh, Team Liquid, and they did get Hoonies. But also on the bottom side, Cody Sun aggressively flashed there uh, with the Lucian, and that can be punished as well. So both top and bottom are possible areas for Xpithy. Here we go, though. Another binding hits. More bindings, more damage. Cody, Sun, and Vulcan feeling more comfortable in this lane now after the assistance they got from the gank, putting Double Lift and Core JJ on the back foot. Yumi never has a flash to begin with, and now that Double Lift has spent his, Team Liquid has to be really mindful of their positioning in this bottom lane. Definitely true, especially considering early ward investment by the side of Clutch Gaming on the bottom end of the map. They've got Control Ward plus Scuttle Crab plus the Tri Ward Brush there. Uh, gonna keep their aggressive pushing bottom side well informed. Actually, Smithy just passes over it, goes back to backtrack and take out that Control Ward. And you can see the question mark ping down there from Clutch Gaming as they're saying, all right, he's clearing that one out, so we aren't gonna have any vision going forward on where this guy is at. Level four on both junglers still. And here's where you look for possible all-ins in Zed matchups. Demonte is about to hit level six, has gotten his first recall off to get the Serrated Dirk. You need that lethality for when you go for your all-in with your level three, uh, six death mark. Yep. As soon as you can get that, 
you get a jungle gank. This is where kills can actually come through because a good Zed will be able to save it uh, for the flash and still be able to follow their lane opponent. All they need is a little help from the jungler to start it off. If Smithy passing over a ward might allow Clutch to get into position. Doesn't look like they'll be maneuvering too much just yet. Xmithy moves in, drops the control ward at the enemy blue buff. Vulcan walking over is going to see where he was, but Xmithy will take the blast cone out, also denying that for future gank paths that may come in from Lyra. Double lifting for JJ once again, setting up shop below this tier one turret. Pretty easy for them to work on some plate money down here, but Lyra and Demonte are in the bottom half of the river. The point is not yet capturable. It does have a delay between captures on when you can go for it again. Lyra is going to wait that out and back on top of it to make sure he captures that away, keeps it away from Smithy. But back in this bottom lane, it's business as He's usual. running past the ward. Lyra wants to make it happen. Over the control ward he goes, but Vulcan is low HP on this one. Doublelift and Core JJ. Still no flash on Doublelift. Exhaust available for Core JJ, but that is it. Prowling projectile fired off, and Team Liquid has an easy time disengaging. Yeah, they're able to kite long enough, and with no deep vision onto X Smithy, the Skarner, the counter gank there would be devastating. So good yep. call by Clutch Gaming not to force that too hard, even though they had a ward in the side brush to try and see that uh, and go all in on double lift. They had no intelligence as to where X Smithy was, and a possible roam from Jensen would be devastating. And as we've been focusing a lot on the bottom half of the map here early on, I want to turn attention towards the top side real quick to comment on the Karma, because this is a champion that we see have some different build paths, some different opportunities, depending on the game. Sometimes it's really poke heavy, sometimes it's more of a supportive role. But with the Chalice on impact, we will see more of that supportive role, at least at the start of the build during the early and mid game from this champion. And honestly, when you've got a Corky and a Sivir to do the damage, I like this. Yeah. And they also talked the, in the last game about the Karma with the Athenes. Magic resist early on from your Chalice feels quite nice. Thruni so far has been pushing and doing a very good job on that Rumble because they've gotten multiple sightings of Xmithy earlier. Now they have no idea that he is uh, on the Dragon. Pushing bottom lane should secure it for Team Liquid. Doubleton Core JJ have retained control of this lane so effectively that it does earn you pretty free objectives. As far as the Ocean Drake being picked up, Smithy should be able to finish it. Here comes Silas, though. Kid Lyra get in there. Lyra's making his way towards oh, the pit. It. He goes after it, but he's not able to secure it. He does grab the ultimate from X Smithy. TP's coming in now from both sides. Lyra looking to maybe make a grab if he can do it. Remember, X Smithy's not even level six. The real Skarner ultimate is not available. Only the clone is there. Double with popping the spell shield, getting himself away. Summoner spell is going to be used here by Team Liquid. Disengage a little bit. The heal coming out from poor JJ, just to make sure they all got away in time. And nothing else comes of that except for that Drake. But now Impact may be in some trouble here in the mid lane. Ignite I mean, plus the Shuriken. He'll burn away. And first blood goes to Demonte. Kill for Demonte on the Assassin mid lane. It's not on his lane opponent, but he'll take it. Takes down the top laner here. Impact using both summoner spells in that fight. Teleported down to answer it. Vulcan here is still on mid, trying to make a pass at Jensen. Really hard to do much of anything while the Valkyrie is up, though. Of course, you can very easily get away from any sort of skill shot you might fire after him. And Jensen is just going to move up in the 1v2 against these guys. Let's see how it looks now that Hooney makes his way into the mix with the Smithy here, though, and that ultimate now armed and ready. Clutch Gaming decided to back away. All right, that was a much-needed kill for Clutch Gaming uh, because they just expended everything getting down to this dragon after Team Liquid had already taken the dragon. Here's another look at how it happened. Impact was trying to clear that ward. Flash in from Demonte, able to land the death mark. Both Qs hits. Ignite goes on at the end to secure it as well. And you could see the shuriken above Impact's head. For those that may have forgotten, because it's been a while since we've seen Zed, <laughs> shuriken above your head means you die as soon as it pops. But Impact shielded himself yeah. at the end to try to bait out the, oh, I think I've got the kill. I'll go for the fadeaway. Cool guys don't look at explosions. Unfortunately, Demonte was ready to throw everything down to secure uh -huh. it. Ignite finishes him off. He outplays the mental outplay and earns himself that first kill. You can see has the ingredients for the first lethality item in inventory here. And you can't really go wrong with lethality stackers by just throwing in extra long swords whenever you can afford them. You're going to need 14 of them or something to finish your build. So easy choice. And there's a fairly low cooldown on Deathmark early on, even for Zed. So he should continue to look to attack members of Team Liquid that do not have flashes. Currently, that is only impact and technically for JJ, but Yumi's don't really count there. No. Take a look at this wraparound gank from Lyra. Silas slipping into the brush here. 
They want to attack Impact with no flash still. Will they go for a possible dive, though? That seems a bit risky against the Karma. With a lot of uh, shielding, it can get very frustrating. Uh, and as you point out as well, the stopwatches are all online. Makes it very difficult to pull off that kind of a dive, but Lyra is waiting in oh! the so patiently. Waits for him all the way, finds the chains, looking for the chain CC follow up. There comes your rumble ulti over the wall. Hooney's not there in time, but he's gonna go all the way in. The flash oh, makes it all, but there's the stopwatch. You cannot underestimate it. It's a one for one, almost a one for two. Captain Flowers, I feel like I know this very well because you give me the PSA every single game. Yeah. Always check your opponent's inventory for active stopwatches and clutch gaming, go for the dive. As you pointed out, boom, it is a, uh, there to save Karma. So Impact survives long enough to get a counter kill in a 2v1, that means bottom side of the map is very, very open for Team Liquid to push ahead and they get the tower. The first month after those runes came out, I feel like I entered <laughs> it every other game to a stopwatch that I forgot existed. It has been burned into my mind as something you must keep track of. The bottom side, Team Liquid getting that first turret money, getting all the plates associated with it. They're 2,000 gold ahead here against Clutch Gaming. Jensen will continue pushing up here in mid lane. We'll see if Vulcan can come around to make some sort of a pass. But with Impact showing up behind, this is a 2v2. CG doesn't win. All right, Jensen, been firing away, gets one of the turret plates off of that mid turret. They're actually swapping lanes as well. As you see, Double Ups was able to teleport in with the Yumi attached. You get a 2 for one on that. Here's Impact walking in to face check. Lyra is going to be able to get away because there's a big heal there that will stack up uh, the tether for Karma, has the shield. Is able to shield and bait Huni further under the tower. You see how long Impact waited to actually activate his trap card uh, until Huni's very deep under the tower, ensuring his death. In the end, Lyra does go for the kill to at least get the one for one for Clutch, but he also has to flash out. Greed is a deadly sin and patience is a virtue. Means Team Liquid makes a one for one on a play that looked like it would otherwise favor CG. And now we're on to the Shelly games. One and a half minutes left before the plates go down means if either team wants to get the extra benefit from that, they'll have to secure the Rift Herald early and then drop it rather quickly afterwards too. Garner Spire secured by the side of Clutch Gaming means that Smithy's going to feel significantly weaker around this objective until they can recapture that. Clutch Gaming has a lot of bodies around this point, and they do not want to concede that objective to TL, but Team Liquid says, all right, whatever, we'll just go for the turret directly. Mm -hmm. Double lift. And Core JJ, big strengths here for Team Liquid. They dominated the bottom half of the map for the first 13 minutes after teleporting up top. Team Liquid trying to move their power around here. All of Clutch grouped up in the tri brush on that control ward, kind of waiting for a play here. Let's see if they go for it inside the Rift Herald pit. Both junglers also have a Skarner ult ready to go. If anybody's out of position, <laughs> they will quickly find themselves captured and bursted down. Shelly getting impatient, running away. All right, back home. Shelly's just playing Ring Around the Rosie here, and everybody's just trying to wait for her to despawn, I think. Or at least wait for the plates to despawn so you can't get the bonus value out of her, I should say. Meanwhile, on the bottom half of the map, Impact has been able to push all the way into the turret, so that does occupy Huni for now, and his t uh, teleport is ready. Huni's got a couple more seconds on his, but Team Liquid have a few seconds of desynced teleport timers. They're trying to force the Rift out on it. Here come the teleports. TP from Clutch Gaming means Team Liquid has to head away from this one. Shelly's going to stay aggro. We'll see if Clutch Gaming are able to secure the Rift Herald instead. We just get a leash from Team Liquid on this one, but TL's not willing to walk away from it. It's going to turn into a full-on team fight. Equalizer comes down. Devil is going to be eating a little bit of damage, having to flash away now. It's Smithy in danger. Goes into the stopwatch, keeping himself alive, having to continue to disengage Ooh. now. Lyra comes right back into the mix, but he's going to be killed. Devil with the damage, and Lyra goes in alone and falls. The Skarner gets the last laugh there. Lyra wanted to be a hero, goes in to finish off the low health member, but immediately activates the Skarner ultimate, and that will be Team Liquid then rotating the mid lane here to finish up this turret. Jensen has been able to farm up his full Trinity Force, and along with Double Lift at his side, they will melt it. Well, Clutch Gaming got the ability to maybe take a turret with the Rift Herald, but in response, they traded away a kill and the ability to definitely take a turret in the fact that Team Liquid took a turret. Yeah. So wouldn't exactly say that one went in their favor overall, but Demonte is patiently waiting in this brush up here in top lane to see if maybe he can get a kill. Yeah, I feel like you'd always have, uh, you'd always take a turret now over a Rift Herald for later. Mm -hmm.
Meanwhile, Demonte on the top side, able to push in impact on the Zed. He's level 10, still has uh, the extra gold advantage with that one kill. Ghost Blade completed now, so some more mobility for this assassin, but not a lot of super viable targets. Bottom side, they are going to try and trade here for the Cloud Drake. Predator activated from McSmithy, but he's outnumbered, so that would be a risky move. Outnumbered and no ultimate means the Skarner threat Back is severely lower compared to what it normally is. But Xmithy just walks right into the Drake pit. It's going to be slain by Clutch Gaming regardless. Skarner has to flash over the wall to keep himself alive. And the shutdown on the double if goes to DeMonte. Clutch Gaming with a big win in that one. Yeah, that was a little bit scattered here. Now they're continuing with an invade. They find Jensen. They are not done yet. Jensen disengaging there. Core JJ Ulti going to be helping out with that when Shelly summoned up here in the mid lane. Equalizer used to dissuade Team Liquid from moving in in time. Shelly's going to continue putting auto attacks into that one. And with five members from Clutch Gaming, they'll try to secure the rest. But a couple more auto attacks should do the trick. And there you go. Clutch Gaming on the board for objectives. That was pretty big for DeMonte. You get another kill here on the Zed. He'll be able to get another Serrated Dirk item, funding his Lethality Armory. Let's take a look here. Double F walked over the ward, so you see on your screen, DeMonte just goes right for him. One combo from the Zed. He had no flash, so he was completely dead. Also, at the same time, Lyra had a very nice smite steal on the actual objective. So even though Team Liquid had to teleport in from Jensen, who has Package and the Yumi, you know, a very powerful uh, transition for him over to the bottom half of the map. Uh, Clutch Gaming play really well around that power, and the uh, package really doesn't earn Team Liquid anything. Clutch Gaming definitely needed that yeah. small victory because Team Liquid currently ahead and scaling very nicely with their Corky and their Sivir. And Clutch Gaming isn't one of these teams that typically bleeds out a ton in the early game either. Last week, I believe, was the first time they had actually lost a turret pre-15 minutes. And in this game, they've already lost two. That third one taken down now by Jensen. So Team Liquid showing exactly what the difference between going up against them and going up against some of the other competition in the LCS looks like. Clutch Gaming's really going to need to step it up. And this does also answer the question that some people have been having about why has the meta developed into the Corky and Azir's in mid lane? Because those are the best damage scaling mid lane champions for your team fights. Corky uh, now past the Trinity Force. Once you start to get a couple more items on it, the damage output from the Corky and the Sivir is going to be amazing during the team fights for Team Liquid. And then they have a bunch of support champions around those two hard carries. Yeah. Like Smithy in the front line to tank, and then two shielders from Impact and Core JJ. Impact showing no signs of working towards a more AP-focused Typical solo laner build, instead just wants to continue supporting those two big carries. Ardent Sensor completed now. You can apply that to everybody on the team with a Mantra Inspire if you want to. Also, having that Athenes we already mentioned earlier means mana and extra shields are going to be easy things for him to manage. As over the wall goes Vulcan with the flash, Smithy going to be caught out here. And that is one dead Scorpion. Lyra makes sure it happens. That's kill number four for Clutch. Big play there from Vulcan. Uses his flash to get the kill. What can they get on the map for it, though? Yeah. Bottom turret is probably the best target as there's a minion wave fairly close. Huni does head down there, but nobody else from Clutch comes. So I don't know, uh, you know how successfully he'll be able to finish it off. It looks like Impact is thinking about sticking around and defending it here with Karma. So Clutch Gaming might not get an objective, even though they expend the flash to, to get that pick. Um, they definitely need to utilize the time where they have power play options. Right, I mean, that's Vulcan's flash. That's a huge part of your ability to initiate on a team that honestly doesn't have a lot of initiation mechanisms. You look at your AD carry, mid lane, and solo lane positions, no engage there. Yeah, you've got the ability to steal an ulti with the Silas and go in with something like a Skarner ult, but you really need those flash bindings and spending that to not get anything aside from the 300 gold on Skarner's head, not the best outcome here for Clutch Gaming. At least it is that kill that keeps him eh, a little bit further ahead, but still plenty of work to do here up against Team Liquid as Xmithy farms up. We're almost to the point of the game where Baron is relevant, which means we will see the teams focusing around this top half of the river here soon. And that was actually very important that Clutch Gaming try and get a turret off of that kill because they're the team that really does need to take down the Team Liquid defenses to force them into scattered formations so that DeMonte can actually make use of the assassin here. You know, Zed wants 1v1s in the side lanes. Zed does not want a team fight versus a team that has AoE shields and a Skarner that's looking to sting him. Uh, so it's very, very important, even more so than normal compositions, for Clutch to actually get 
these two last standing outer turrets down. Top and bottom are actually still fairly healthy for Team Liquid. Uh, so Team Liquid's game plan is actually going quite well for themselves. As they've got two items already on double left. One and a half there for Jensen. Almost about to complete that infinity edge. Going straight for the damage options now as Clutch Gaming gonna find themselves getting engaged on, but it's Smithy quickly having a flash out defensively. He's in some trouble. Monte goes after him, but he's a little bit too late. The shields doing exactly what they do to shut down Zed's plan. Jensen grabs a kill on the back end of the fight, and Team Liquid come out on top. Jensen goes in with a package there. He's able to touch him with the end and get off the auto. Now it's Team Liquid with their power play. 5v4 headed up mid lane. Clutch trying to get in defensive position. Clutch Gaming, they managed to get two people up there near that tier two turret, but the other two are gonna be stuck in the jungle, and that means Team Liquid take down turret number four. And now there is a Cloud Drake they can retreat to, try and even up the move speed bonuses here. Smithy goes straight for it. He's gonna start it up while the rest of the team holds off Hooney. Or needs the flash. Yeah. No flash on your rumble means less kill potential when you go towards those backline members that might survive with just a little bit of HP. And that last fight showed us just how good this Team Liquid composition is at being deceptively tanky. It earns them the mid lane turret, it earns them their kill, and it earns them this Cloud Drake on top of it. Let's take another look at how it went down. All right. Nick Smithy goes in on Starner, looking for the all-in. You talked about the Yumi speed boost, but nice binding from Vulcan initially stops the initiation, and then all the shields there save X Smithy. So Demonte goes back in to try and finish the job. He ulted double lift there on the Sivir, but it was such a big answer. Double lift got off the boomerang blade, huge chunk, as well as the auto from Jensen with Trinity Force proc, allowing him to go all in onto the assassin. Uses the package there to get in position, uh, slows him and tags him with the edge, plus the extra auto to finish off the counter kill. Meanwhile, Team Liquid's double supports of Impact and Core JJ keep X Smithy alive. Demonte is going to be found out here in this top half of the river with X Smithy nearby. Demonte knows he can't try any sort of a fancy outplay. As soon as you even go towards anyone you at do all, a fancy with run away though. You could do yeah, you could throw your arms behind you and Naruto run straight to Area 51 instead of top lane because you're not going to make anything happen up here. <laughs> Meanwhile, double lift back to mid lane here. Sivir trying to <laughs> wave clear as usual. Which honestly isn't Protect too hard when you're flowers. two and a half secrets. item Sivir. The secret to winning here <laughs> against Clutch Gaming for Team Liquid is just clear out all the minions, scale up, waiting for that late game. It is working out pretty well for them. I mean, honestly, Clutch Gaming have been ahead in kills the entirety of this match, but Team Liquid has always been in command of the gold. The gold grab just likely looking like a steep cliff uh. at this point. Well. I guess more of a gradual incline, more of a hill, you know, a hike, maybe, I guess we'll call it. But Clutch Gaming have got to find some sort of a way to make these plays happen. But as I already said earlier, the engage tools are so limited for this squad. When they're not ahead, things feel kind of like they're out of their course. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to, to use some sneaky tactics here, hiding in the brush, looking for lone members of Team Liquid separated from the pack but they haven't been able to take advantage. Even with all these control wards in defensive placement, that's the right idea, you know, that's the setup. And DeMonte was up there on the top side looking again for a possible opening on Jensen. Isn't able to find it in time though, and now Team Liquid starts to do the dirty work. They're clearing out all these control wards. Nick Smithy goes in! Nick Smithy trying to find that ult. He was not able to make it happen in time. I believe you heard the voice, but he wasn't able to get the pull. Now he's got it anyway. There goes Hootie! He's taken down. Double grabs the kill money, and now Clutch Gaming are on the run. Will they grab anybody else? The Yumi ulti wants to find one, but it just can't quite get that third hit. Team Liquid's going to chase them all away. They grab the flash out of both the enemy jungler and AD carry. We'll see what else they want to decide to go for now. Still five men strong. They've got priority over this top half of the jungle. Impact leading the charge. The Yumi bouncing around between whichever member is most pertinent. Cody's Cody. son going to be in some trouble now. Root finding its way down, and he is blown up. With the AD carry out of the picture, things just keep coming up Team Liquid, and the push keeps going. Right, you thought Yumi was scary when attached to Double Lift. That was Yumi attached to Impact. The double support squad takes down the enemy AD carry. Now they're trying to fend for themselves in the jungle. Demonte's lying in wait here, but Team Liquid won't take the bait. They go for the objectives. They pushed in the top lane. Jensen's already on the inhibitor turret up there. He dealt with the outer one already. That leaves the mid. Window right open. 
No reason to run around on a nature walk through the jungle when you can just knock on the front door of the base here. Mid lane tier three turret nearly eliminated. Top lane turret taking a little bit of damage here from Jensen as well. Clutch Gaming finally with five bodies alive on their own side again are able to repel Team Liquid. But this was a serious bonus for how far ahead Team Liquid was earlier compared to now. They made a lot of headway here. All right, Demonte doing the dangerous job of heading into the jungle to try and clear out all their vision. One of the benefits of going with the full lethality build. Get some easy ward clearing. That's the number one priority here for Clutch. They're trying to keep some sort of vision around Baron because yep. they know it's, this may be their last hope. If Team Liquid comes knocking on that door fully decked out in purple, you're done. Yo, lined up with five people, you are done. There's no way you can get in the middle and try and assassinate through all these defenses. So it has to be in one of these more scattered formations trying to take advantage of someone out of line. Team Liquid has done a good job so far of not allowing those sorts of errors. Remember, although Team Liquid are at the top of the table, currently number one, they are a back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back champions, they have some issues during regular season play of losing games randomly that you would not think of them to lose. They don't have that invincibility factor that top teams often do. Oh, are we gonna? I don't, I don't, I don't quick, think he's gonna do any kind of an ambush down here. I don't think Assassin Rumble is gonna make too many moves onto Corky here, especially yeah. not with the package. No, That's basically a free escape You're or a, a free turn around and assassinate the Rumble. <laughs> I mean, you just drop the bomb right on him. I mean, Hooney's right here. Ah, you lose, you lose faith in the Assassin Rumble. Oh well, Assassin Rumble is coming around from behind. Equalizer gets dropped down. Jets and the rest of Team Liquid in retreat. Hooney's gonna be taken low. He gets popped. Demonte moves forward. That's what I'm talking about. You do not assassinate when Skarner is right there. Falcons run down next. Double kill, double lift. Lyra is going to be out of the picture here soon. Jensen goes on a killing spree. And Team Liquid get four for nothing. Yep, they're coming to knock it, and the door is wide open. Bottom lane will go down. Team Liquid looking to end it. No reason to even knock. Just kick the sucker down and keep on marching. Nexus Turrets, the next target here for TL. What are you going to do when you're Cody's son? Double if said he was looking to see more out of him. He's not going to see it today. The Nexus already about to fall 28 minutes into this game. Team Liquid showcasing why they're number one. Clutch Gaming going to drop here. They'll run out of the fountain, but is there really a whole lot you can do? Team Liquid seem to be just hanging around to pad the numbers here a little bit more. Cody Sun falls. Demonte is going to be going into the stasis. Hooney goes down next. Rampage up to Jensen. And the minions say, enough of this. Nexus goes home. Clutch Gaming goes home. Team Liquid grabs a win. 10 and 3 now for Team Liquid. The three time defending champions have turned it on after the first couple losses early on in summer kind of finding their way and making adjustments, trying to learn from MSI. They have dialed right back into the tried and true strategies, scaling backline damage from mid and bottom, supported by multiple champions and a front line in there, leads to a very, very secure victory for the squad. And from the beginning of Champion Select, I was curious how this game was going to play out because we got to see the three champions in the Lux and the Karma and the Yumi that are all so often banned. And when Team Liquid gets to have two out of three of those and just say, nope, you are dedicated, Jensen and Double Lift hand-holding, you are making sure they are comfy, they've got a mint on their pillow when they wake up in the morning, and they can carry however they please, <laughs> that's what you get, and that's the kind of carry performance I want to see. Mints every single morning. Every Gotta morning. keep them happy. On the spot. I, honestly, I have a lot of respect for the style that Clutch are going for, right? That's why at the beginning we were talking about, I hope that they continue to try this style, continue to try and push it early to see if they can find openings in other ways. Well, they found the openings that got them to win this game and for, well, Liquid did, I should say. Clutch Gaming still got a little bit more to work on, but for more on how Team Liquid secured the win here for themselves, we're going to send things back over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. Before we get into it, we got to welcome Broken Blade to the desk to help us break this one down. Normally, we would jump right into, you know, the macro strategy or the team comps. How did this team win or what did this team do improperly? I want to start by just looking at an awesome play. Mm -hmm. Core JJ. There is a reason why we continue to talk about this guy from MVP of last split to playmaker of this one. Down in the bot lane, saving his 80 carry with a heads up play. 
this is so insane, like, how quick of a reaction it is. He doesn't see Lyra coming down here. He goes to protect, and then mid-air, after it's already coming to him, he disjoints it by hopping off and collecting it, so double lift has time to flash out. Otherwise, he CC'd up and killed right away, so... Yep. That is the difference between our, my bot lane dying and maybe losing their lead, and like, we're okay, we can stabilize. That was insane. I yeah. mean, it is. It's, it's, it's incredible to see that kind of mechanical heads-up play. And I think it results in exactly this, right? The ability of Doublelift and Core JJ to outplay certain moments is what makes them so scary as a bot lane and ultimately build leads like this. Yeah, I think uh, they definitely had the better bot lane draft for TR. And just absorbing this kind of pressure is really, really insane because this leads, they made a play topside and Rumble got behind off that play because Saz was making play bot, but TL bot lane absorbed the pressure and we, they got a lead on, on top side, which was really insane from TL's bot lane, I think. And I'm sure you can speak to this, just having played against the TL a number of times at this point. It makes it so difficult then to develop an attack strategy for this team because you assume a certain level of execution from each of their players just by virtue of being good individually at the game. And so then, how do you put them on a composition that, you know, that their mechanics and abilities can't cover for? Uh, let alone the fact that they end up on Yumi Sivir of all things, so you didn't even put them on a poor bot lane duo. What's going on with that? I don't know. It's just the first pick Rumble doesn't do it for me when <laughs> yeah. you leave up so many power picks like the Karma and Yumi, mm -hmm. and you don't grab any of them. And Lux is strong, but... Feels like a well, tier below. At least Clutch has an identity, right? Sure. The identity is the most difficult compositions to execute for the most part. Which should that be the identity of Listen. a team that is tied for seventh? They are zeroing in on something. And if okay. it's a matter of refining it and needing the practice, I mean, they've had a lot of practice. It's still not there, but it's looking better. The Zed got kills this time around versus the last time that it was Zed. So, listen, I. No matter how much we say, they're yeah. still sticking you're not to gonna it. Make, what are we you're gonna not going to make this gaming comp sound good to me. But what you have made clear to me is the difficulty of execution for this composition, which, again, gets highlighted to an extreme against a team that doesn't make as many mistakes as your average team yeah. would. We, draw, we jump right into top lane dive from Clutch Gaming. Broken Blade, I want you to help me break this one down because I think there was opportunity for this to turn out better. Uh, yeah, this, this was really unclear to me about was happening in the game because Rumble was going to the Herald, warding it while Lyra was in the bush waiting for Karma to be there. But when Karma face checked the bush, uh, Rumble was not ready to, to punish that. And I think that was a very, very big mistake in the game, which caused a lot of problems later on because they're using a lot of sums and resources for, top lane, for the top lane dive, but it was a one for one trade and it was just very very un unsync by I think it was lane. forced because when we were watching that you were saying they can't die her she's got stopwatch yeah. and beyond that she's got the magic resistance from the chalice so mm. it's very true that they didn't want to go for the gank and she just faces like oh, I might as well try to kill her I guess even though we're not in position and even if you knock her down it's the least important member of the team it's karma top it's not the composition at all yeah, which is, and, and the fact that that play took place at 10 minutes, again, to me, speaks to the desperation that Clutch was already feeling, right? This idea that they needed a lead, they needed a gold advantage at that point in the game to feel comfortable moving into more of the team fight phases. Let's jump ahead just four minutes to around the Rift Herald, where Team Liquid has been positioned for maybe two, three minutes now at this point. Clutch looking for the right kind of fight and still struggling to find it. I mean, this is why they wanted that gold lead, is how much harder it is for them to find kills. You have the Karma speed up, the Sivir speed up, the heal the shields and so even though smithy kind of gets cut off from retreating from the rumble equalizer and isolated out the yumi on top of him buying space with the ultimate he's still getting cc'd up but finally some last minute heals come in as well he just turns around grabs lyra and for a kill so unnecessary for him to go in you just got the ripped herald you could have just eat out yeah i mean they, they thought they could get kills because it's 300 hp no stopwatch you know skarner and you think you can get that kill but there's just too much utility on team liquid side broken blade what this is a huge and maybe impossible question to answer, but where in this game would you, like what, what if you had to pick one thing to have done entirely differently for Clutch here, given these drafts, <laughs> and pick any point in the game, like what, what, what would have been something you would have tried or you would have called for trying? Um, I think Clutch has to snowball the game in order to win because they clearly got all drafted, I have to say. Um, I would go a lot into mid lane 2v2s okay. because that is their, uh, pick into Corky, the last pick into Corky, and 
if that pick does not snowball, they will not win the game because the only identity in the in this comp was team fighting. But mm -hmm. they still got they, they TL still had a better team fight because I mean, how can you team fight against Karma, Severe, Yumi? It's just too hard, and if they can't snowball, it's just very hard to win at that point. So an idea that we were talking about was your jungler can go into the mid lane and just burn his own flash to force a gank. It's not going to yield a kill. But what you do is you trade flashes. So now Jensen loses flash against the Monte. Now he has to be stuck in the lane against an assassin that has ignite and his own flash. So the kill threat is a lot bigger and it makes the landing phase a lot easier for Zed because he's ranged, uh, sorry, melee against range. So now he can't be harassed as much since Corky has to be a lot more careful mm -hmm. since he has no summoners. So your jungler sacrifices a little bit of himself to get his laners ahead. Yeah, and uh, DeMonte had picked up the first kill for the team. So with a little bit of that gold in the pocket, maybe set up to really take off if things were positioned in that way. Yeah, I mean, the scary thing was the rest of the replays, the whole rest of the game looked like the one that we showed where it's like someone on TL gets really low and then gets all the shields and heals and then they're fine. And that's... If you have just a little bit more damage, maybe you can punch through before the second shield and all those other things start coming on top. But right, it, it didn't happen. Just fight after fight broke out the same way where one person gets low, gets topped off, and then you have a couple of those in a row and suddenly the game's over. I, I think that is important to note, you know what you're saying there, the idea that with just a little bit more damage, if, thi if, if things had tipped in that direction of clutch, we could very be easily having a different conversation yeah. here if they went off to the races, right? But again, that's kind of the difficulty of handing one of these compositions over to Team Liquid is that when you don't get that lead, you're doomed. And I gotta say, when we have so much Yumi in action and the likes of Karma coming in, we might need to start looking at the healing that was done throughout these games because mm. it's so impactful, so even more so than the damage that they're dealing. Right. So for us to really get a full idea of the insane value that Yumi provides. With Karma coming into the meta uh, more prevalently here, what, what are your kind of top couple picks uh, lane-wise uh, against her? Um, today we saw in the Syllogy game they picked Rise into Karma. I think that is a very good option into the Karma. It wins after his first base, uh, after Tier or Lost Chapter. You have a really good lane against Karma. Um, but Karma is just right now a very strong champion that has very few counter picks. And it's just, even if you're losing lane, for example, in this game we, we saw that um, Impact was behind like almost like 100 CS, but it doesn't matter it, once you get to the Athenes and... What was the second item? Uh, Ludens. Did he go Ludens? Ludens, Ludens no, Athenes in this the, one? Or was that the item? previous one? I, I'm remembering uh, a Ludens Karma. farm in my head. Go on right the now. items. Hold up! Uh, Ardent Sensor? Yeah, Ardent Sensor. Ardent Sensor. Yeah. There you once go. you get those two items, you basically never have to farm again as Karma. And just right, you're playing support up. Karma now. Yeah, you, you basically are the support, the second support on your team, and then... You, you just all team fight everyone. It's just, yeah. Sounds brutal, man. Absolutely sounds brutal. Up next, Echo Fox and Optic are going to battle it out for game five, so don't go anywhere. I was trying to pull up the map.